the upper left is the 12 volts that creates the switching for the control circuit. Once it turns on, uh, the 12 volts is brought to the coil on the opposite, which is the lower left. You'll see the ground. That coil, when it receives power, turns magnetized. Well, that magnetism pushes over the switch between pins 30 and pins 87. That switch closes, which allows a path of current on the load side, which basically comes through from your battery. You should have a fuse in circuit close to the battery. goes through the switch to the load, which would be in this case the horn. It could be a light or even a starter motor. Um, I hope you enjoy this video and learn something along the way. I'm having a problem with my horn, so we're going to work through this problem. And to do this, it's pretty much the same. It's an electrical situation. Whether it be a, a, a lighting issue or a starting issue, you can work through this problem uh, pretty much the same way um, with all electrical issues. So what I've started with um, is my horn is not working, so the first thing I did is I went to the fuse. I checked my inline fuse. Uh, the inline fuse was fine. The next thing I did was I turned my key and I verified that the relay was clicking. In doing that, uh, the relay was clicking, but that does not mean that the relay is not bad. So in this process, we will work through figuring out and making sure that relay is working properly. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, like I mentioned before, is we're going to check and make sure that our fuse is good. Sometimes by just looking at the fuse, you may not be able to tell if the fuse is bad, so we're going to go ahead and do that as our first step. So we're going to take our voltmeter and set it to volt DC. We're going to take our ground connection and connect it to the motor. Anything uh, as far as steel connected to the motor should be a good ground for you, or the frame is going to be a good ground for you. Now we're going to check both points on the fuse, power coming in and the power going through the fuse. So we need to check both points on the fuse. So right now this is power coming into the fuse and we're getting a reading. We're going to check power on the other side of the filament and we're still getting power. So our fuse is good there. So we know we can uh, move on to the next thing and uh, know it's not the fuse. Okay, so our next step is to check our relay. And by doing so, we're going to take our voltmeter. We're going to check the power coming in and out of the relay. Um, we need to make sure that the power is energizing the coil that magnetizes this and activates the switch. So we're going to go ahead and turn our key on. I'm going to turn our voltmeter on again to volt DC. That's not going to change. We're going to work with volt DC through this whole process. I'm going to touch both points, the ground and the power. And we're going to go ahead and activate the horn switch and check our reading. So we're getting we're, we're getting a reading there. Whoop, if my hands would stay on these points and we're showing we have power coming through our relay. Okay, so after we verified that our relay was working properly, we're going to make sure that the power is flowing out of our relay up this red wire which goes to my horn which isn't working. So we're going to go ahead and turn the switch on, power it up. We're going to connect our ground like it's instructed before, a good frame or engine spot. Get yourself a good ground and then we're going to go ahead and touch our positive. And we're hitting our switch and we're showing we're getting a full reading on our voltmeter. Okay, so now we're going to check our power and ground going into the horn. Um, we're going to check the volts through our voltmeter on that. Key is already on, so I'm going to hit both my ground and my power at the horn. And I'm going to hit my horn switch. Let's see if we can do this all in one shot. Okay, so I'm getting no reading and I'm connected with my voltmeter at my two points. Okay, so we finished up the last little section there by checking our power coming into the 
motor. So now we're going to figure out whether or not we have a bad electrical item or we have a bad ground. In doing so, we're going to check our ohm resistance on the ground coming in to my electrical item, which in this case is my horn. So we're going to go ahead and switch this to the horseshoe, which is your ohms of resistance. And I'm going to check to make sure that that's functioning pro pro uh, correctly. Hold it up in the... So we, we're connecting both of these and we're getting a reading. If you say OL, which would be open line, then we wouldn't have a good resistance reading. Now we have OL, so we know there's an open line. So what we're going to do in this case here is I'm going to take my ground, connect it back up to my motor because we know that's a, big ground, a good ground. We're going to pull this line, which is my ground line, coming up to my electrical device, which is my horn, and we're going to check to make sure I have a good ground. By doing so, we should get a reading, and we're not. We're getting an OL, which is an open line. So that's telling me that I have a bad ground coming up to my horn. Okay, so we're going to continue in the same direction with determining our ground wire here. So what I've done is I'm going to measure our resistance. I've connected the one end of my wire, and we're going to check where it meets the frame. Now I've gone ahead and I'm hitting the spot where the wire connects to the frame, and we can determine by that that the wire is good, but let's go ahead and hit the frame spot here where it's connected. Now we're getting an OL, which means open line, so that we have no connectivity through that ground. Now if I move to this bolt, we're going to get a weird reading on our meter, which is determining we're not getting a good connection with our ground. Now if I go ahead and move this to another location, like up on the motor, we have an open line so we're not getting connectivity to the end of this wire going to my horn okay so we've determined that we have a bad ground but we want to determine and make sure that the motor inside this horn is good and inside the horn motor is one wire that is wound up lots and lots of windings so we're going to determine whether or not there is a break in that wire in this motor we're going to connect up to our two points and check our resistance. So we're showing resistance, which means there's no break in that wire. Just like in a starter motor, there's one wire with lots of windings inside our relay one wire, lots of windings. If there's a break, we'll find it by checking the resistance. Or it'll say OL. Or it'll say OL. One. Okay, so we determined my original ground was bad through the voltmeter. So what we've gone ahead and done is ran a new ground jumper just to uh, verify that that our horn does work. So we've gone ahead and turned the bike on and we'll hit the horn. Okay, so to cover some things about resistance, um, you don't want to have your fingers on the probes. When you do that, you cause a resistance reading. So anything you're checking, electrical, with your body touching these probes, is going to give you a false reading. Um, anything that does work has resistance. So, just like a household light bulb you'll have resistance if the bulb is functioning properly. So we're going to show that with this little bulb here by touching the ground and the, the hot location and we should get a resistance reading. So we're getting an 86.8 which is pretty high but that's based on the fact that you have such a small wire running through the bulb. You can do, determine the same thing with a fuse whether there's power or not running into this fuse, we're going to determine whether or not the fuse is good or bad with the resistance. We have very low resistance, but we have resistance, so we don't have a break. There's no open line in this fuse. So we know it's good. So we know it's good.